Please, let's settle down. We're about to start now. Hello. Yeah, please, let's settle down. We're about to start. The chairman, chief executive officer of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Please, let's set it down. I'm getting some questions. Brigadier General Buba Mara Tayad, uh, members of his team, the presidential communication team, distinguished uh, members of the press. It's my honor to welcome you once again to this session of special briefings coordinated by the PCT. Today, we have no other person than the, brigade, the chairman, the executive officer of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Brigadier General Buba Maro. On December 10, 2018, President Mamadou Buhari ordered that drug abuse had, in his words, grown to become a major health problem in the country, requiring very urgent attention, appointed Brigadier General Buba Mara retired as chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee on the... Yeah, I don't know where they are. We are all live now, please. You can hear me. I should go ahead. Okay. On December 10, 2018, President Muhammadu Buhari, what is this? What's grown to become a major public health problem in the country requiring very urgent attention? Appointed Brigadier General Buba Marwa, retired, Advisory Committee. 
on the elimination of drug abuse per se in the country. The committee submitted its report on October 18, 2019, and impressed with the quality of work done by Paseda, the president thought it fitting that General Mara continue the job, this time with his appointment as the chairman chief executive officer of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, in January 2011. The recent strides recorded by the agency under his watch underscores the need for Nigerians to support the organization as it rejuvenates the war against drugs and illicit substances, while ensuring that trafficking of drugs is reduced to its barest minimum. The Chairman CEO of NDLEA is here this morning to use this platform created by the Presidential Communication Team to share with representatives of local and international media here present as well as stakeholders on the effects of drugs and illicit substances addiction on the populace, steps being taken in the rehabilitation of addicts, and efforts being made to protect the image of the country through this all-important fight against drug trafficking. As usual, the chairman will come on this podium. He will speak for about 20 minutes, after which he will take questions from representatives of the media here present. On this note, I would like to invite the chairman CEO of NDLEA to come and speak with us for about 20 minutes. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. You have to come this way, sir. Okay. You want to introduce? You can do that. No, you can do this. Gentlemen, permit me to introduce those of us joining the chairman for this uh, presentation this morning. Um, I have with him there Mr. Sunday Joseph Obone, the Director of Prosecution and Legal Services. The young lady on the extreme left there is Dr. Ngozima Dibuke, Director of Drug Demand Reduction. My friend seated with me there is Dr. Abdul Ibrahim, Director of Access and Financial Investigations. The young man behind there is uh, Mahmoud Isayola, Special Assistant on Social Media. And my humble self, your friend, Femi Baba Femi, Director of Media and Advocacy. Thank you. Mr. Femi Adeshina, S8 with President. Madam Garbashehu, SS8 with President. Distinguished members of the presidential media team. Ladies and gentlemen of the media. Good morning. Thank you very much for your kind invitation to me to address this important forum. While this presentation is part of the routine State House briefing series, it is, however, a momentous occasion for the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, as it allows us to formally present an overview of our escalated drug control efforts and the highlight of our achievements in the year of action. The year of action is defined by the renewed war against abuse and trafficking of illicit substances. I am more than delighted to be here this morning for this presentation, chiefly because of what we are bringing to the table, namely a report of tangible 
results. I understand we, we have two hours. Even though I was guided to make a presentation about 15 minutes or thereabouts, it will take longer, I'm afraid. But I assure you there will be no dull moment. <laughs> Let us begin with this film clip which was prepared um, recently. Because in the NDLA we move with the speed of lightning, some of the information, even though it is a very recent uh, video, it may have been overtaken by events. And in the course of the presentation, I will update you on some of the figures. But essentially, um, the ingredients contained therein are relevant for this moment. Do we need to do that? Hey. I am the Don't open your eyes, Some popping pills gives pleasurable moments. Holding the spoon to the flame and sticking the needle to the skin boosts your confidence. Bravo! Every penetration gives you elation. Welcome to the cool gang. Welcome to the high. Feel, just like the wind, the thrill is gone again too soon. The joy ride is short-lived. You only lived in the bubble for minutes, hours, or probably just a day. Soon you begin to crave for more. Shortly you will try to find the spoon, the needle, and pop in more pills again. A new soul is birthed into darkness. The search for the next victim never stops. Cocaine, hemp, weed, cracks, myth. Tramadol, Boudin, Eyes and Heroin are always on the prowl hunting for the next victim. But are the drug lords on the winning side and smiling to the banks? This still business as usual for illicit trafficking of narcotics. Will Nigerian remain trapped in the toxic brew of drug addiction forever? Is the future bleak? No. It is the task of NDLEA to stop all this unacceptable nonsense of drug abuse, drug trafficking in Nigeria. There is a new sheriff in town. Nigeria's anti-drug czar, retired Brigadier General Muhammad Bubamarwa, is leaving the stone and tent. The heat is on. A non-stop action with a new maxim, offensive action, has been launched against the criminal laws involved in drug trafficking across the country. The illicit drug world is in distress. The cartels, drug lords, the criminals, the junkies and all emotionally indifferent monsters benefiting from this evil nexus are unsettled. It is no longer business as usual. In four months, In the same vein, interim and final for future orders on assets and funds worth billions of naira linked to drug traffickers and barons are being blocked, including a 30 billion naira slush fund currently being trailed. In less than four months, 2,175 drug traffickers were arrested with 2 million and 50 thousand 766.3 kilograms of assorted illicit drugs seized 
There has been the filing of about 2,100 drug cases in court with over... Country. This appears like magic, right? It appears the Tsar and his team are the ultimate ones sent to uncover the hidden world of vice and to restore virtue. This can only be the outcome of the LEA through practical steps. The icing on the cake is the unprecedented support and commitment to enhance the potential and capabilities of National Drug Law Enforcement Agency by the Commander-in-Chief, President <coughs> Muhammad Buhari. More so, a well-armed and trained strike. Also, the visibility of the agency for local and international partnerships has been restored. Although the war against illicit drugs is not the walk in the park, the NDLEA is gradually winning the war. Presently, the agency is attracting international support the EU, the US, the UK, the French government, and others. for me to state up front that the progress report of the NDLEA should not be taken as an isolated appraiser. Rather, it should be taken as an integral part of the anti-drug trafficking thrust of the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. Not only did Mr. President set the tone for the fight against illicit drugs by handing the agency the mandate the direction and the set objectives, he also provided the catalyst, in particular political will, support, and encouragement. These are boosted NDLEA's capability to deliver. Coupled with the technical support of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, EU and our partners, US, UK, France, Germany, Saudi Arabia, India, and Egypt, the fight against illicit drugs has never been this intense, focused, or impactful in Nigeria's history. Expectedly, the results have been gratifying. <clears throat> Drug abuse has destroyed and continues to destroy families, our youths, our communities, and society. It is also behind most criminalities in Nigeria today be it insurgency, banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery, and so on. In my interaction with my colleagues in the armed forces, especially those involved in anti-banditry and, and anti-insurgency operations, they have disclosed to me that all the areas that they have 
captured from the insurgents and bandits, they always discover remnants of drugs littering uh, everywhere. I've also interacted with some of the uh, kidnapped uh, victims who, uh, uh, who regained their freedom. And they have told me in the period of their captivity, permanently their captors were always popping pills and smoking uh, cannabis and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight against trafficking in illicit substances is in full swing. Since January this year, when NDLA launched Operation Offensive Action to spearhead the renewed war against illicit substances, the tempo has remained high. Now and for many months to come, the agency will sustain the momentum of its anti-drug activities across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Having said that, it is pertinent to note that the anti-drug trafficking agenda can hardly be prosecuted without the agency itself first going through a reform process to transform it into an efficient drug control apparatus. The situation I met on the ground at the beginning of the year when I was appointed into the chairmanship of the NDLA was a far cry from the ideal. Though I was chairman of the uh, PASIDA, which was earlier mentioned, um, the discoveries that I made on actually uh, assuming office was stupendous. The NDLA at the time was decrepit, grossly incapacitated, poorly funded and understaffed, personnel were poorly motivated and the morale extremely, extremely low and they were working in parlous conditions and under disenchanting circumstances. And the starting point was for me to find a way to reinvigorate the NDLA workforce. We have to start from there. That we have done through, that we have done through several impactful measures, which among others included the promotion of over 3,500 officers and men whose careers had stagnated in some cases for 20 years. No movement. Sequel to that, we also made spirited efforts, thanks to Mr. President, to clear a pile of unpaid entitlements, especially the burial expenses to the families of 188 officers who had died in the line of duty and were owed since 2014. I found a situation where when our personnel get killed in action, the command will solicit contributions from personnel themselves to buy caskets, to ferry the body home for burial and all the bare expenses. Only President Muhammad Buhari um, gave the resources for us to settle these families, 188 in the last 15 years. And for serving operatives, we put in place a bi-monthly reward system in addition to other career incentives. To avoid a relapse, the leadership set in motion a seamless process of continuous revision and upgrade of welfare and work conditions requisite for the emergence of a world-class anti-narcotic agency. Part of this process includes the proposition of, an, of a new salary structure, which we are awaiting approval and implementation. Equally, the building of barracks. We, we don't have barracks. Our personnel go after the barons and the traffickers, arrest them, send them to jail, and go back and live among them. And so, in the night, they come and set fire to, the, to their homes or, or assassinate them. But thank God, President Muhammad Buhari has uh, approved barracks for us. We've also uh, made payment of group personal action insurance, of which premiums had not been paid since 2014. 
So now the agency has tied up the loose ends and our officers and men are now eligible for prompt indemnities for permanent or temporary disability, medical expenses, injuries sustained in the line of duty, and death. Their efficiency on the field has also been boosted with the distribution of vehicles and equipment supplied by our partners, including arms and ammunition. We approached the armed forces um, and they approved some arms and ammunition which we have uh, distributed. To complete the overhaul process, we have invigorated the process of amending the NDLA Act to provide a more robust legal framework to deal with current drug trafficking and abuse challenges. I'm sure you are the media, you've been reading some of the sentences. We are trying to remove this option of fine. Recently, we got judgments against drug traffickers with the option of fine of 2,000 Naira. 3,000 Naira. There was one we appealed in Edo just last week. Yes, they put 75 years or 700,000 Naira. As a matter of necessity, we have also had to scale up our workforce by resuming the suspended 2019 recruitment and the training of 5,000 more operatives with more to join in the months ahead. Once the process is completed, the agency's workforce will have doubled by 200% by 2022. The imperative of sustained efficiency also necessitated the creation of new directorates and units. We've created a new directorate called Directorate of Planning, Research and Statistics, Directorate of Special Duties and Strike Force. Presently, the training of our strike force is ongoing in the Nigerian Army School of Infantry, Special Warfare Division. They will graduate next week by the grace of God. The creation of the strike force is an indication that NDLEA has upgraded the fight against illicit drugs in Nigeria to a full-scale onslaught that is being prosecuted with full strength. The strike force will have the capacity and the capability to enter anywhere in Nigeria, whether it's forests, swamps, built-up areas, and physically challenge the traffickers. We created a full directorate of media and advocacy, which, which Femi heads. We created a new directorate of airport operations that will oversee all the international airports. We created a special monitoring task force. This is an investigative unit that is answerable only to me. They can go to any command and investigate it. The, the exhibits, have they been tampered with, or are they as they ought to be? The prosecution, is it going smoothly, or does there appear to be some compromise? So this task force keeps people in line. We also um, instituted a provost marshal who will be in charge of discipline in the service. And the provost marshal heads the internal affairs division. And finally, we set up a special purpose committee. These are of stakeholders outside the agency so that we don't fall into what they call groupthink. If you read public administration, I'm sure you'll be familiar with groupthink. We have to hear from people outside stakeholders, professionals, governors' wives, and so on. It is also pertinent to know that there has also been a paradigm shift in our operational philosophy. NDLEA has made a transition to an intelligence-driven anti-narcotic organization. Our strategies now go beyond the arrest of peddlers of easy drugs who are at the lowest ranks of the trafficking ladder. Now we go after the brains behind the syndicates with the objective of dismantling 
illicit drug organizations. And we, we use the full breadth of intel, intelligence uh, capabilities. Uh, fortunately, having worked myself under the Defense Intelligence Agency as Defense Attaché twice in my military career, um, it was easy for me um, to resuscitate the, this aspect, taking full advantage of human intelligence and technology. Now, what are some of the key measures we've taken to de-escalate the rising cases of drug addiction? The National Drug Use Survey of 2018 by UNODC gave a troubling portrait of drug abuse in Nigeria. The country having a drug use prevalence of 14.4%, which is almost three times the global average, we could no longer live in denial that Nigeria has a thriving illicit drug culture. One in seven Nigerians use drugs, and that is within the ages of 15 and 64. So if you expand that, it's going to be definitely closer to one in six, if we're not careful. One in four are female. There's 14.3 million Nigerians using drugs. Of that number, 10.6 million are using hemp, smoking it or eating it or drinking it. We've responded with the following, I'll just mention a few. First, we launched Operation Offensive Action. This is a non-stop result-oriented drug supply reduction activity calculated to A, mop up existing illicit drugs in the country throughout. B, stem the influx of narcotic drugs into the country, as we witness daily. And C, disrupt disconnect and dismantle the trafficking pipeline and thus remove Nigeria from the global drug network. Since its launch in January, Operation Offensive Action has been in full swing and the continuous onslaught against drug traffickers by NDLA operatives yields weekly results across Nigeria and there will be no let up because some people think, well, you know, this is just the beginning. Uh, it will soon end. It will not end. It will continue to intensify. We have to really go after these people. The weaponization of asset for future against arrested, jailed, or indicted drug barons is another step we've taken. As part of the broader operation, the agency also shifted gear in its tactics to aggressively pursue the brains behind drug trafficking networks using a combination of laws including the NDLA Act, the Money Laundering Act, and the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty, to target assets amassed through drug trafficking activities. Going after the assets is critical in this fight. A person will be prepared to spend five years, even ten years in jail, if you come back and meet his assets waiting for him. And so we go after the person and the assets also. So far, NDLA has scored big victories and has been making contribution to the consolidated accounts of the Federation. The War Against Drug Abuse Campaign, WADA. This was launched by President Muhammad Buhari on June 26 this year. It is an advocacy campaign designed to win public support and elicit their involvement in the effort to rid society of the menace of illicit drug use and trafficking. WADA is a part of the vehicle that facilitates the implementation of the National Drug Control Master Plan 2021-25. Three months after it was flagged off, we reached out to states and have met with governors, local government chairmen, community leaders, religious leaders, traditional rulers, social groups, and so on. The effort has won support for NDLA activities at the grassroots. In the months ahead, we hope to saturate the Nigerian society with a message that will get the populace to see itself as a stakeholder in the effort to curb the trafficking of illicit substances. And WADA has also rebooted a drug demand, uh, a drug demand reduction department. We encourage drug tests 
in security organizations before they are employed. And the NDLA has also set the pace in this. All those who we recruited first have to, to, be, to be negative. The tertiary institution, that is students, politicians, public office holders, and Kano State government has led the way in this. Nobody gets appointed to the Kano State government without first clearing that he's negative for drugs. We also introduced the issue of testing before wedding. Is there any one of you here who would wish his daughter to marry a drug addict? Raise your hand. So why don't we, instead of doing a one chance situation with your prospective son-in-law, uh, why not, as we do the HIV and the other ones, uh, genotype and so on, why don't you introduce it also? This has been receiving uh, accolades, especially from the traditional and religious uh, institution. We should now watch a short clip on the War Against Drug Abuse Initiative, um, how we've been going in and out. Here's the Kano Elders Forum. Bashitrofa, uh, the champ. Advocacy to the um, to Khan, to Kano. I was telling the bus owners here that uh, it takes a lot of money to invest in buses, and if you allow drugs to be found in your bus, you will lose the bus. So better pay attention to what they load in your buses. The road transport workers who take drugs so that they can stay alert and long, long distances. That's how they kill people. Accidents.
additional institutions fully involved. It was in Aqua Ebon. We just selected one per, per zone. That's our state commander, Akwa Ebon, speaking in Ibibu with the king. We have to start with primary now because primary school now they, they use drugs. Oh. not just going and seizing drugs, we also carry all these activities to, to, to cut down uh, the demand. All right, thank you. <clears throat> all the steps we've taken is the activation of the standard practice and policy guidelines. Now, reducing the demand for illicit drugs in society depends to a large extent on the successful treatment of existing users. You have to treat them. You have to treat them. And this, account, this fact accounts for the shift in global drug policy vis-a-vis -vis the treatment of drug problems as a public health issue. It's not entirely a criminal issue for those who use it. Um, sometimes they cannot actually help themselves. Consequently, we have operationalized our standard practice and policy guidelines, which is the, the treatment and rehabilitation document. It's a treatment and rehabilitation document developed by the UNODC. This document is used like field manual and provides synergy among our counselors and further boosts our capability at treatment and rehabilitation. As you know, 25 of our commands have counseling centers and we're always the first port of call for those who need help. As far as achievements are concerned, I must first be very clear that the result of the, uh, the, 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 the achievements 
recorded are actually the result of the hard work and commitment of our directors, our officers, and our men. Their sacrifices. As of October 15th, the agency has recorded over 9,000 arrested traffickers, including six drug barons. Over 5,000 drug offenses cases have been filed in court. Over 100 billion naira worth of drugs and cash have been recovered. More than 2.7 million kilograms of assorted illicit drugs were seized. And 5,579 drug users were cancelled and rehabilitated by NDLEA. A figure that gives a fair balance between our drug control and drug demand efforts. Because we say we filed over 5,000 cases and rehabilitated over 5,000. So that's a fair balance. I have to, at this point, also highlight some of the spectacular seizures accorded by the agency since January. These include the following. First, the seizure of 230 tons of cannabis in Edo State in February this year. You want to picture it, imagine five 30-ton trailers filled with, with cannabis in one season. And in a recent uh, authorization of rates across the country, we seized over 100 tons of psychotropic substances this in the last two weeks. We also um, seized 451,807 Capagon tablets when over 70 kilograms in September at the Apapa Seaport. This was the first ever recorded seizure of the drug in the West and Central African regions. And let me say a little bit about captagon. The captagon pills, these are amphetamine-like uh, substances. And the closest for your understanding is to reflect back on the opening campaigns by the Germans in World War II. The German forces were actually issued with amphetamine tablets as part of standard issue. As you issue rations, ammunition, you also issue that. And so they are able to break into Poland, Czechoslovakia, the Low Countries, and even France in 1940 because they were chemically enhanced. They were tireless, no sleeping, not hungry, and fierce. That is the captagon that we seize. Obviously, it's for where? <laughs> it's for the insurgents and the bandits. Now, we were given information from our partners the particular container, we tracked it across. It started its journey from somewhere in the Middle East. We know the country. It was transshipped, moved from ship to ship and so on, but we kept an eye on it until it arrived. Now, those 451,000, the market value is about $25 a pill. So you're already talking about $11 million worth that was seized. Because of the significance of the captagon, I would like to go through um, the process. Just before he switches that on, we need to understand that those pills were found inside machinery, inside machinery. The machinery was built deliberately for the pills. So it's like you buy a Mazda's car, but you know that the pills are in the engine block. You build the car for, for, for the pills, so that car will be destroyed. But if a car is $100,000, and you're going to get $11 million out of that. So it took, and I must praise uh, our personnel, who stayed engaged in this. Please run it.
That's the container. Remember, we were only given the number of the container. So we first had to bring the, the machines out. There are actually three machines. The machines appear to be marble polishing machines. That, that's what they wrote in the Bill of Lady, which is actually what they are on surface. figure out how to detect it. We did our best in dismantling the machines, but um, we could only go up to a point. There were a total of 19 motors in the three machines, and so we set sniffer dogs after them. We used about eight dogs on this operation. Once the dog nails like this, it means something is inside. broke the case for us. Um, otherwise, there was no way we could have. Because we, we, we will be liable if we destroy a machine and nothing is found. There, there, there it goes. And so we had to have a certain uh, degree. Of, and we signed an indemnity, obviously.
switch open on. see what's inside. This is supposed to be an electric uh, coil with the drugs. We did this for all the 19 uh, Imagine that. That's about half a million pills. Think of what it would have done on the insurgency and the bandits uh, had it gone. They go berserk when they take these drugs. And it originated from Middle East. That's why they call it the Hadis uh, drug. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We've also, within this period, been able to intercept. 1.99 million capsules of tramadol in February at the Apapa port, and another 144,000 bottles of codeine syrup in March. And only last week, we made a seizure of 32.9 kilograms of cocaine on the ship that is still under our seizure. We are still inspecting, uh, going through with all the dogs uh, to see if there are more. Uh, this is just last week, and it is an ongoing operation. That uh, seizure was worth 9 billion Naira in Naira terms. We also intercepted 43 kilograms of cocaine in February at Tinkan uh, Seaport, and another 22,590 kilograms of codeine syrup at the same port in September. We had an intercept, interception of 4.99 million capsules of tramadol, again, weighing 2.5 tons in May at the on port. This particular uh, was also, we were given the lead by, by our partners who we work with, our international partners, and we kept an eye. Originally, it was headed to a papa pot, but was diverted to One, thinking that that's a more likely uh, area. It's quite interesting in some of our let me say technological way of uh, going uh, about this business. We actually had a situation where the trafficker was speaking to some sort of a prophet or medicine man and asking for him to choose and advise him which of these days he gave actual <laughs> days that they are going to move drugs from social place to social place and they want to uh, to be advised which which is their lucky you know, they, <laughs> for, that they will not be caught. We caught them, by the way. <laughs> At the airports, we have recorded a series of interceptions and seizures of cocaine and heroin. But Mutala Mahama International Airport remains the epicenter of the spectacular seizures, including what stands today as the biggest single seizure from an individual in 15 years, which was 27 kilograms of cocaine smuggled from Brazil. 
This was in January. We did another 24 kilograms of heroin in April, another 27.95 kilograms of cocaine in May, in the same airport. That him unaccompanied. The man who sent it did not accompany it, but asked that it be collected here, and he wanted to see. And so we seized the, age, the clearing agent, seized his contact here, and negotiated bribes that we give it to them, provide a pay social amount. So that's on haggling. And I was fully involved, I must say, as the discussion, they, they keep me informed. And so the man in Brazil was comfortable that everything's in order. After this, just another Nigerian uh, agency and a way to do business in Nigeria is to pay bribes. So uh, he paid an advance, we collected it, and then flew in with confidence, straight into our arms. Yes. So that case is in court also. Um, let me state at this point that by the end of this year, by the grace of God, we would have had sufficient decisive blows to the cannabis cutters in the country, going by the rate we are going into the forests to destroy hundreds of hectares. And I must take the opportunity to also express uh, gratitude to the armed forces. Um, we work closely with them in the operations that require sufficient firepower because especially in the deep forests they are always waiting for us also fully armed we also have a call center that is in process this will be a 24 7 call center that will provide counseling we have this situation of stigma uh, people who abuse drugs, who need treatment, are reluctant to go out for treatment because they feel that they'll be noticed and they'll say, ah, look at this important uh, person. He's also, so, so he's also using drugs. So this is one of the ways that uh, we hope will assist. And of course, there's a death of uh, rehab centers in, in the country. So this call center, which will be made up of psychiatrists, uh, psychologists, and then the correct, correct uh, uh, staffing is in process. And if all goes well, we pray that by the end of the year we'll have to run in. We've also signed a number of international partnerships. The first one that I signed was with the uh, DEA, the, the Drug Enforcement Administration, of, of the United States. I had been aware of that even while I was in Pasita. In Pasita, I was told that there is two years the MOU between them and us was lying, no signature, and that they are about to pull back the, the assistance and the cooperation. So that's one of the first things that I did. We also signed another one in August with the Drug Law Enforcement Agent of the Gambia. This was signed in Banjul. I went there to formally seal the cooperation between both countries to combat illicit production, manufacture, and trafficking in narcotic drugs. Similarly, Saudi Arabia General Directorate of Narcotics Control and NDLE have held preliminary discussions that will culminate in the signing of a pact for international cooperation between both agencies. They actually came here last month when we had this meeting. Um, we are looking at India next year with the Narcotic Control Bureau. So these are all welcome developments about the growing influence. I must mention that we have received donations of equipment and training from the DEA, the United States, the International Narcotic and Law Enforcement Agency uh, of the U.S., the U.K. Border Force, the U.K. National Crime Agency, we received support, equipment, training from the French, the Germans, the dogs were provided by, by the Germans, and other foreign governments have in the past warmed up to the NDLEA. There have been commendations for the agency performance, especially 
in the drug supply reduction by our foreign partners. Their willingness to associate with NDLEA was also expressed verbally by their emissaries. In some cases, the ambassadors actually visited us. Um, the US ambassador came, French came, and others. The government of Germany has formalized plans to establish a 2 million euro narcotic detection dog training facility in Ikeja. This will be completed over three years. It's a very, very welcome development because we need more dogs. And these dogs are expensive, uh, even the feeding and the medication. Now, the, the, we get into the conclusions now. The collaboration between the NDLA and state governments. We recognize the importance of state governments as key partners and supporters of NDLA within the country. They are especially critical to the successful prosecution of the war against drug abuse. And I must also mention the governor's wives are doing their best in their various, they, they, they have uh, the northern governor's wives at Salem, we, we are working with them. We have extracted commitment in support of NDLEA's drug control agenda in several states. A number of states have supported our drug demand reduction efforts with pledges to build rehabilitation centers. Other states, such as Lagos, Rivers, Kano, Katsina, Ogun, Adamawa, Edo, Kaduna, have donated operational vehicles to the agency and or helped in rehabilitating our offices and paid uh, rents. Consequent to the implementation of the war against drug abuse across the various levels of, of our society, we have reached out to all the 36 states and governments with regard to the establishment and strengthening of drug control committees at the different levels, as at the state level, local government level, and community level. All the communities in this country have drug abuse challenges and we need to set up these committees and it is ongoing, including uh, the, the clubs in schools. So even as we are prosecuting a war against illicit drugs trafficking, the NDLA itself is presently undergoing a process of change. We look forward to the future with optimism. A future where the agency operates at full strength with adequate financial senior and a strong institutional backbone. With our achievements, modest achievements in the last 10 months, it is now clear to Nigerians that a drug-free Nigeria is possible. Once more, permit me to thank Mr. President for his support, which has been instrumental and decisive and key to the achievements we have recorded thus far. And finally, I would like to seize this opportunity once again to thank you for the invitation and to invite you all to join us in the war against drug abuse. Thank you very much.
strike force and the ability to come into anywhere in Nigeria and physically challenge these um, drug traffickers. Are they sufficiently equipped and armed to do this? Because I assume that they will be encountering bandits in the forests. First one, you agree with me that uh, Nigeria has the highest number of drug prevalence in West Africa, and the speaks to it. And the uh, United Nations Office of Drug Crime has also projected that it might be an equity by 2030. What are you doing? What other measures are you looking at beyond these measures that are meant to us? What other measures are you looking at to address these challenges? The second question, Thank you very much. Um, Gloria, the alternative is jail sentences. Straight jail sentences. Now they give the jail and the option of fine. And the, the, the business, the one business on earth today that parades colossal sums of money is a drug business. And when you find, they will just uh, settle and be on their way back to the streets to continue. So the, the option we, we have uh, is a jail term. The strike force at the moment are in process of being re-equipped. I mentioned somewhere that the armed forces have supported us with their weapons, additional weapons and ammunition on top of what we already have. And we're going to acquire more. We have to be at the cutting edge of this business. And the training is actually the key component of the strike force. And they are graduating next week uh, in the infantry school in Jaji, Nigerian Army Infantry School. So we're going to be ready for them. I cannot name a daily number because the seizures come across the country. Hmm? Well, a hundred billion so far. And this is my first year. <laughs> so 
I can tell you that we have crossed the 100 billion mark so far. And this is money, um, the, the market value of drugs and the seizures in cash, which goes back to the consolidated federal uh, account. Then the issue of the Capricorn, Lebanon, originated from Lebanon. It's not a secret because it shows on the, uh, the shipping documents where it originated from. The National Assembly has been fully behind the NDLEA. There's no question about it. I've met with the leadership and also we're working closely with the committees on narcotics, in both the Senate and, and the House of Reps. Um, we're working closely with them on the NDLA Act. And in fact, the chairman of the House Committee uh, on Narcotics is tabling uh, a resolution already. Is what they call it? Is tabling a resolution on drug tests. On drug tests as one of the veritable means of cutting down uh, the drug demand. Because if you know you are going to be tested before you get employed or before the students return to school, you know, and so on, you, you certainly know that uh, it's better for you to avoid taking drugs. And if you abstain one month, two months from there, you may get out of it. Or if you know that you are taking it, you go and get rehabilitated. So um, the National Assembly, we are working um, closely with them. Now, I thought there was a question about the increase in, in prevalence that is climbing. <clears throat> That's why we are doing these efforts um, from two angles. First, obviously, is the supply reduction. All the seizures that we are doing everywhere, destroying and burning the cannabis farms and so on, because first you have to have the drugs to take, isn't it? If there are no drugs, then there can be a drug abuse. So every kilogram that we seize is one kilogram less on the street. That is one aspect of it. And then the second, which is probably more important, is the drug demand reduction aspect where we face the consumers to discourage them from taking drugs. And this prevention, they say, is better than cure. So if I mention 14.3 million Nigerians are using drugs within this age bracket that I mentioned, it means over 180 million are not. You can look at it from the other side. And so we have to target those who are not using drugs. You know, drugs are three categories. Those who are not using, those who are using but not addicted, and then those who are addicted. You know, those who are addicted are 20% um, of those who use drugs. So the vast majority do not use drugs, obviously. And so the efforts has to be continuing and redoubled down to the grassroots on advocacy and sensitization in families, communities, school systems, the media have a very important role to play, you know, and so on and so forth. Now, the question was asked about the itinerant officers that obviously in societies everybody will not be perfect. I think that I'm sure that was the point you are making and that what do we do? And as I mentioned, we have two categories. <clears throat> First, we have the monitoring task force that is answerable to me. It's nothing for me to hide from you because I've told this to my commanders that I have my own informers in the commands. So when things happen, I myself ring the commanders and tell that something like this has happened there. Why, why do you not report it? 
So they know this already. So everyone is on his toes. And then we have this particular unit that goes, investigates. I don't know what happened in the past, but the end earlier today, you can't tamper with exhibits. It's impossible. It's impossible. The, the exhibit keepers, the exhibit rooms, the records, everything has to be there because we check. And obviously, they, they know the penalty because the provost marshal is there who will try them. So there, there's, there's discipline now, and we're doing our best to make everybody walk straight. And you know, in this business, once, and this is from my experience from the military, once the men that you command or administer know that the best is being done for them and their entitlements, what they need, you know, they see that the efforts are ongoing, they fall in line. They fall in line and do their best. That's what is happening in the NDLA today. Thank you. We're just taking one, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. My name is Julian Natal Obama. I'm from the South East Papers. Just a follow up to the ambush question. <laughs> um, if you are suggesting um, jail term, what is the guarantee? Should they go to, I mean, we've read stories of prisoners. Uh, selling drugs from uh, was the guarantee that um, this will stop and they will not continue to operate from there. I, I would like to know the brain behind the drugs from uh, Lebanon. Well, I want to, I want to, have you tested this, your idea of uh, prospective uh, son-in-laws being tested for drugs? How, how have they received that?
Please say much about the challenges you are having and how you, what went into putting drugs into that machine. You have to be very, very technically adept to be able to pull that up. So it seems to me that uh, even the manufacturers of such equipment uh, maybe involved or have some role to play in that kind of uh, operation. So I'm wondering, have you reached out to the origin of that machine? Have you reached out to the manufacturers to know or to stem that sort of operation to, to lift it from the origin so that uh, uh, instead of going through all these kind of uh, problems we went through, the problem was solved right from there. And uh, as for the other sources, what are you doing in South America? Are you working with uh, the anti-narcotic agencies in other in such countries? You don't go through these uh, problems we're having. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, the first question was about um, the involvement of politicians. Definitely. At least um, we've mentioned one in Lagos because he was caught with, with drugs um, at this point. But I will not mention names of people that were investigating, obviously. But the politicians, yes, they are involved, like every other part of society. The jail sentences we are looking at is a minimum of 15, maximum of 25, and life. Those are all in the NDLA Act that is under revision at uh, National Assembly. Juliana, we are working with prisons. There was a time, and this was information that I uh, fell into during Pasida, that Some of the barons who have been jailed somewhere between the courtroom and the jail, they, they are replaced. They don't serve the, the sentence. Um, I came across this during, during Pasida, but with the interaction that I had with the, with the, with the correctional services, right from them, um, and some of the visitations, it was made clear that this happened better in the past, in the distant past. Now, the correctional service is upstanding, and they are doing their, their level best. We had an arrest uh, some, a few months ago in one of uh, the prisons, supported by the head of that particular prison about involvement of some of the people there in passing drugs into the, to the prisons. So I must commend the, the correctional services uh, that they are upstanding as far as this is concerned. Now, the issue of whether a jail sentence guarantees that when you come out, you will never do drugs again, nobody will give you that guarantee. But it is a strong deterrent. It is a strong deterrent if you face 25 years of life in prison and somehow you manage to serve the sentence and come out in your old age for you to go back to the trades. You only have your own self to blame. But it's a very strong deterrent. Now the issue of the captagon the two people asked the question. First was about whether we got the people behind. It's, it's tricky, as you know. In the business of drug trafficking, it is layered in such a manner that the big man there 
looks for several layers to shield him. So it's a very painstaking and slow work. But at least we have one arrest that has been leading gradually. And I know at the end of the day, we're going to get those people who are behind it. Once we set our minds, we're going to um, go for it by the grace of God. Now, the question about wedding and tests. I don't know if the question was for me personally, and I can tell you that no one will come <laughs> near uh, my own premises if I find that he is a drug uh, addict or a drug user. But the point, though, is not to reject would-be suitors. The point is that because, you know, your, your, your daughter may insist, I still love this man. So at least you can treat the person, isn't it, before it gets worse. So I think that is uh, part of drug demand uh, efforts. But this has been well received, as I said, by the clergy. Everywhere we've gone around, the clergy have welcomed it and the traditional institutions. Now, Reuters, you asked about the seized drugs. What, what do we do with them? We get orders from the courts for destruction after the case, and we, we burn them. The question, of course, was asked immediately about the burning, what it does to the environment. I agree with you absolutely, but we burn them far out of cities, and close, in close uh, coordination with the Ministry of Environment, who, who also guides us. They are incinerators, and we are looking at them. very, very expensive. But we are certainly, that has to be the way forward. We have to end up with incinerators somewhere along the line, and we are on it. The issue of the uh, Captagon, I would only tell you that we are working with our international partners. And this, this probably will answer another question to do with, that was probably the last question to do with Latin America, like Brazil and all those source, source countries. There are two things that we are looking at. Like Brazil, for instance, we already uh, have an existing MOU, so we, we, we work in partnership with them. We also work closely with the Defense Intelligence Agency. Um, in fact, the defense attache there has held meetings with me on what is going on, um, because for now they are covering us. But ultimately, funds permitting, we want to open our own offices in some of the source countries. We believe that that will get us closer to, to, to the action instead of working through, through other people. But <clears throat> the international partners that we are working with, I assure you, um, yields a lot of uh, outcome. But this is an area of intelligence I wouldn't want to go into more details. Um, the governor and the cannabis. I've actually had occasion to tackle him once when I addressed the governor's forum and the question was asked by him. The first question is, there are 36 state governors and FCT minister. Why is it only one of them is pushing this agenda. Definitely, I agree with you. There's money for those people uh, in those countries who have legalized it. But the issue that we must answer is whether we and them face the same situation. In Nigeria, we are leading in cannabis use. 10.6 million Nigerians are using cannabis. And now, 
the argument has, has been made that uh, the, the, the Commission on Narcotic Drugs, the Commission on Narcotic Drugs has deleted cannabis from Schedule 4 of the 1961 Convention. This is one of the arguments <coughs> that, all, that has always uh, uh, come up. But what is the position of Nigeria? The Commission of Narcotics Drugs, they did the voting for cannabis in December 2020. Yes, it was deleted by a vote of 27 to 25 against. 11 of the members in Africa, nine of us, including Nigeria, voted against it because of national interest. Because you have to look, is it money or is it life? We have to be very clear. By the time you legalize cannabis, everybody will be smoking it. The money you are expecting, you will be building rehab centers with it to treat those people. So this is very, very important. And further to the argument on, on the on 1961 convention, which people always use that argument, still cannabis is under Schedule 1 which means it is under strict national control. So the issue uh, we must be very clear is we have to face Nigeria itself. Okay, they say, no, 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 it's NDLEA that will give the licenses, we will control it. How can we do that? How far have we gone with tramadol? Tramadol is a normal drug, it's, it's not illicit as long as it is 100 milligrams and below. But now they are doing beyond that, and we can't control it. We are unable, and we will be unable. So it's very, very important to be very, very, very clear that the NDLA will never support the use of cannabis. Finally, there is no scientific proof that it heals, none. There is no scientific evidence anywhere. The people that do cannabinoid oil and so on and so forth find the document that has some research to give you, you know, survey what how, how, how is the treatment, where, where is the evidence. There, there is none. I visited NIDA, National Institute of Drug uh, Addiction in uh, Drug Abuse in, in Maryland, the U.S., and I put this question. They couldn't, there is no evidence to show it. So this uh, is almost a 419 situation to raise money. And we can't take the risk with 10.6 million already, please. <clears throat> Politicians, advocacy, advocacy. And the main thing is when you run for office, win become responsible for, for, the, for the public and you are taking cocaine and heroin. The money you are interested with, you spend it, first of all, in, in that before facing the people. And in any case, what of how will you yourself look after the people when your own brain is, uh, is not straight? So it is it's very important, as I said, for politicians to be part of both the advocacy that we are doing for them to know and for the public to know that they have to do the tests before being entrusted <coughs> with responsibilities. Logistic companies, where they are? Where they are, DHL and all those, where they are? A lot of seizures, a lot of seizures. If you've been looking at the social media, you'll see people send Slippers, and they put it inside slippers. You saw the other Virgin Mary, uh, you know, drugs is inside. They are shameless. They are not afraid. They do the palm oil, put drugs inside, and ship them through these companies. And we are there. We are there. We are there in all these uh, companies. And you may have seen the cookies, as they use the internet, as, as you said, to deliver. The NDL is also on the dark web, so we are monitoring these things. Otherwise, how do we know uh, some of these uh, people and arrest them, selling cookies and biscuits and other things with, with drugs inside? So we are uh, on it. 
no security agency uh, could say it is without challenges. And the issue, um, unless you are asked, is I know the government of President Muhammad Buhari is upstanding on the matter of drug control in Nigeria and against trafficking and drug abuse. He's very supportive of the agency. And yes, we've asked for some of the, the challenges, like the barracks that I mentioned, like those allowances that the personnel are owed. Yes given all the support um, to motivate the men. We put up a proposal for enhanced salary also, like the other agencies. Some of the agencies that came after us have had their salaries re reviewed. Um, those are there. The training challenge is there. Equipment is there. But we are fully operational. I think that's the bottom line. We could never be 100% uh, equipped, but we are on, on the way. Um, and the last question here is uh, the source of drugs. Yeah, especially those coming, I think I answered that in conjunction with an earlier one, uh, with Brazil. We work with the partners, we, we, we follow our MOUs, and we are going into, I will tell you, for instance, after the, the, the May, a seizure of 43 kilograms uh, in, in, in a Tinkan on the ship. One of the things, uh, one of the recommendations that was acted upon from Brazil is inspecting the ships now before they bring sugar or whatever it is that they bring to Nigeria. And this particular one that was seized last week, they inspected it and seized drugs there. But somehow, um, we still got the report that something may still be somewhere in one of the holes. And that's why we detained it and were able to, to, to get uh, about 32.9 kilograms. Until now, they are there going, going through it. So we, are, we, we continue to work. Thank you very much for the questions and the attendance. Um, politicians who encourage and we have proof and evidence that they are the ones who supplied, they have also been on it. Nobody will be spared. Nobody will be spared. Thank you, Chairman, CEO of NDLA, General Buba Marwa. We appreciate you. At a short notice, he agreed to be with us today. He was to have come next week. But the person that was to come today was going out of the country, so we did a swap and you obliged us. So we want to say thank you very much, sir. And we look forward to having you around at any other time. I would also you. like to appreciate members of his team, Mr. Sunday Joseph, Director, Prosecution and Legal Services, Mr. Femi Baba Femi, Director, Media and Advocacy, Dr. Ongo Zimadubuike, Director, Drug Demand Reduction. Dr. Abdul Ibrahim, Director, Assets and Financial Investigation. And our young brother, Mahmoud Isayola, who is the SA on social media. You are all welcome. Let me also appreciate members of the Presidential Communication Team. We have Malam Garba Shew here. Okay, is there. We have Uche there. Tolu, I've seen everybody. And then our own Colonel Felix Alaita <laughs> of the Office of the Chief of Staff. We appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. And then to members of the media, thank you for being here. And thank you for reporting factually everything that has happened here today. We look forward to seeing you some other time. Welcome.